What's up guys, today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about camera settings in Rocket League in just 5 minutes. Here's the thing though, I've been coaching a bunch of people on my Patreon recently, and I know I've talked about camera settings before, but I've seen just too many players over the past week still using bad camera settings that I felt like I just had to get you guys this updated camera settings guide. Before we get started though, I wanted to quickly say that only a small portion of you all watching right now are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you do find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you subbed to the channel because it's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about camera settings in Rocket League. Okay guys, before I get to breaking down each setting, I just wanted to briefly mention the new preset option in the camera settings menu. Now, for those of you who don't know, since I made my last camera settings guide, Rocket League has implemented a preset option where you can copy a pro's settings. Here's what I'll say though. Do not just pick your favorite pro settings and click off this video. The truth is, just because a pro uses one set of settings does not mean those settings are going to be best for you. What I'm going to do instead is show you the most common settings that pros use, not just one list of settings that may or may not work, so that way you can experiment yourself and figure out what exactly is the best when it comes to camera settings for you. So if you want to, it's totally fine to start with a pros preset, but stay tuned and be ready to adjust these settings as I go through them throughout the video. But okay, starting with the first setting on the list, at the top of the list, we have FOV or field of view. And like I said, guys, I'm gonna get straight to the point and tell you that nearly every single pro player maxes their FOV to 110. Now, the reason you wanna do the same is simply because the higher the FOV, the more you can see on your screen and the more you'll be able to see and react to in game. So if you can, I highly, highly recommend maxing out FOV to 110. Moving on to the next setting, we have camera distance. Now what this setting does is it controls how far away your camera is from the car. When it comes to distance though, except for a few outliers, pros really only choose two settings, and that's a camera distance of 270 or a camera distance of 280. But since almost every pro opts for a camera distance of 270 and Personally, I think this setting gives you the best view of your car in the field. I'd recommend you stick with that. On to camera height, and what this setting does is it controls how far up your camera sits. Now, camera height can be a little more flexible than FOV, for example, but most pros have decided the best options fall between 90 and 110. Now, the reason all these settings are viable is because they give you the ability to see your car well, but also judge depth and height of the rest of the field. You see, if you go too high with this setting, sure you can see the field great, but you'll barely be able to follow your car. And same thing goes if you put the setting too low. You'll be able to see your car great, but the rest of the field, not so much. So my advice is to see what you like best for yourself, but try not to stray out of the 90 to 110 height range. Onto the final major camera setting, we have camera angle. And this setting goes hand in hand with camera height because it's gonna control the angle that you're viewing the field from. Now, I will say camera angle can be adjusted a little more than camera height based on your personal preference without too much of a performance hit. But almost all pros use somewhere between 3.0 to 5.0. So unless you have a really good reason to switch things up, try to find a setting you like in that range. Now quickly before we get into the last two important camera settings, I wanted to give one bonus tip that I share with my patron subs. Now this setting might sound insignificant, but hear me out because I think it is actually really useful, especially for beginners. And that's to head over to the interface tab and turn up nameplate scale. Now what this is going to do is it's going to increase the size of player names in your lobbies, which actually helps a lot with making players easier to spot out. So if you ever have had issues where it feels like the opponent's coming up out of nowhere, try increasing your nameplate scale to anywhere between 150 to 200% to make tracking your opponents easier. 
All right, back to the scheduled program. Let's talk about camera stiffness. So what camera stiffness does is it controls how far the camera moves when your car speeds up. Now, in all honesty, the setting really does come down to personal preference, so I don't have too much to say about it. However, most pros stick within the 0.4 to 0.6 range. So if anything, I would recommend you stick in that middle area as well. All right, for the last two settings, I'm going to group both swivel speed and transition speed together because they control how quickly your camera pans around the field. Here's my take though. Both these settings are definitely subjective, and to be honest, they don't really affect your gameplay all that much. At the end of the day, all they control is how fast your camera moves around. And in my opinion, the faster you can move your camera, the better, but only if you can control it. So pro player swivel speed can vary anywhere from 0 to 100, and transition speeds generally fall between 1.0 to 1.3 or 1.4. But for these two settings, I say try to increase them as high as you can go, but obviously still maintain control of. But okay, I promised I would be quick, so that is really the core of what you need to know about camera settings in Rocket League. Now, I will say I'm going to be following up this video with an in-depth dead zone settings guide, but for now, this should be more than enough for you to tinker and experiment with for yourself in your own games. Before the video ends though, guys, I'll quickly say I'm doing a few coaching giveaways as well as some controller giveaways over on my Discord. So if you're not a member already, definitely consider checking it out to get in on that. In any case, guys, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to stay tuned for upcoming guides. But that's all I've got. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.